This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program. This is Rick Renner and my friend. Today I'm back with my precious friend, Joseph Z. I'm so honored to be here, sir. Welcome, Joseph. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad that my TV family gets to meet you. Well, I'm just thrilled about it. I, I, love, I love your ministry. I want you. you to love his ministry. And how can they find you? At josephz.com. And all the social media platforms, you just type in Joseph Z. He goes live every morning at 7 o'clock Mountain Time, 8 o'clock Central Time in the United States. And it is so good. He works on a whiteboard. And what he puts on, it actually, it's so amazing that I actually said to him, how do you do that? He says, I wake up every morning to catch the wind of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And by the time I'm there in front of the camera, I'm ready to go. And my friends, it's not just prophetic. It is so Bible-based. That's what I love about it. Prophetic ministry should be Bible-based. Amen. But this week, Joseph and I are talking about the ministry of angels. And it's a whole series which is called Servants of Fire. <laughs> That's who angels are. It's a five-part series. It comes in multiple formats, and it comes with a study guide. And my friends, I believe the study guides are really important because you can read all the information while you're seeing it or hearing it, and that really does reinforce the material down deep inside you. And this week only, we're offering you Joseph's brand new book. Ah, please get this book. It's called Servants of Fire. I wrote the foreword, and after I read the book, I was thankful he asked me to write the foreword, because this book will take you on an angelic adventure, and it is Bible-based. It is Bible-based. But today, before I give this to Joseph, I want to read to you from Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. Speaking of angels, are they not all ministering spirits? spirits. That word ministering, the Greek word diakonia, is also the word for a deacon. So just like a deacon serves needs, yes. it means God has sent forth angels to serve and to meet the needs of his people. And they're sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. That's me. That's you. And today I want to begin with a story. May okay, I? please. Now, I don't usually tell these kinds of stories, but since we're talking about angels and I have some stories to tell, oh, please. I want to share one. I was flying to Vorkata, which is in the very, very north of Russia. It's a city where millions of believers died for their faith during the time of Joseph Stalin. It's way, way above the Arctic Circle. Well, just before we went to the airport, I stopped to have lunch. This was way, way back in the early years, just after the collapse of the Soviet Union, when there was confusion all over this part of the world. I mean, the right hand didn't know what the left hand was doing. Rules were being broken on every level. And I was reading in the newspaper about how airplanes were being overloaded dangerously with cargo, and several crashes had occurred because planes had been so heavily overloaded. Wow. Well, that's not a great thing to read just before you get to the airport. No, it's not. But we got to the airport, and the seats were oversold. And so people were standing in the aisles. But not only that, I was seated in the very front right next to the flight attendants and right next to the door, and I could see everything that was happening. Big, big trucks pulled up to the plane, and they loaded so many boxes and so much cargo into the bottom part of the plane, they couldn't shut the cargo door on the bottom of the plane. Oh, no. So rather than say this is too much, they brought in a whole team who just jammed the door shut, and they weren't finished yet. Another truck came, and they began bringing all those boxes into the interior of the plane and begin putting them anywhere where they could find a place. They were stacked, I'm telling you, higher than me from the front all the way to the back of the plane. People were jumping over boxes trying to get to their seats. Man. And the flight attendant standing next to me said to the other flight attendant, I'm getting off this plane. This plane is going to crash. There is no way this plane can properly fly. We are so overloaded, we're going to die. Well, I'm sitting there listening to this, 
Yet I knew I was supposed to be on that plane to go to Vorkata. And I said to the Lord, Lord, do something. Do something to secure our safety. And I am not kidding you. Within seconds, suddenly a flight attendant was on the speaker system saying, everybody get off the plane, get off the plane as fast as you can. There was just a phone call. There's a bomb on this <laughs> airplane. <laughs> Well, remember, the aisles are packed with boxes. You should have seen the people crawling over the boxes, crawling over chairs, fighting each other. Everybody's trying to get off the plane, and I'm at the front by the door. I can't get out because everybody else is pushing so hard to get out of the plane. So we got off the plane, went into the terminal. We sat for hours. They emptied the plane completely. They did a complete search, and then they made an announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, the plane is ready to fly. We found no bomb, but we have made the decision. This time, we are not going to overload the aircraft. You may reboard the plane. I got back to the plane in my very same seat, and rather than being filled with pandemonium, the plane was peaceful. And I was sitting there thinking, what just happened? And I realized an angel called the airport with a bomb threat. <laughs> I truly believe that was angelic interference. Amen. Intervention. Amen. Feigning a situation to protect me. I'm an heir of salvation. So that when I got back on that plane, everything would be in order and I wouldn't die and no would, neither would anybody else. Now you might say, well, how do you know? Well, I was the one that was there. And I'm telling you, I believe God saved my life with angelic intervention. And if you will look at your life, God has done things supernaturally with angels to protect you too. Now, why do I not normally tell these kinds of stories? Yes. Well, I've got a lot of them. But the reason I don't usually tell these kinds of stories, Joseph, yes. is because people become obsessed with these kinds of stories. They do. And often their imagination begins to work over time. They begin to imagine that angels are little cupids. There's no such thing as a Cupid angel. That's just imagination. It's like when you read what Paul wrote to the Colossians. That's right. He rebuked them because they were beginning to worship angels. And people really get obsessed with these things. It's true. And that's why I don't usually talk about it. But on the other hand, we need to talk about it. We do. Because they really are sent to minister to us. There's a whole army of help available if we know how to access it. That's right. We've got to right-size this topic. You know, sometimes things get a little top-heavy and they, they tip over and into error even. And you see a lot of the sensational today. But if we right-size it by the Word of God, then we realize there's a purpose for it. And Rick, you and I, people who are watching this, every believer is a gatekeeper from the realm of the spirit and the realm of the natural. We stand as gatekeepers or some people would call it free moral agents. We're free moral agents because we have an agency that is God ordained to be gatekeepers. That means hum human beings allow supernatural activity, both good and bad. And if you have bad information and bad data, it's corrupted. And then you'll begin to see people that allow negative super, supernatural activity. We call that witchcraft, or we call that confusion, or we call that bad teaching. Now, we got to recognize something about this too. The devil could not beat the church. He couldn't beat the church on his best day. And never will. And never will. But you know what he did do? He couldn't beat the church, so he did the next best thing. He joined it. The, not the real church, but he joined the church in a sense where there was the ability to bring deception, the ability to attack minds. Faithlessness. Faithlessness. He began to bring in an influence because that's the only way spiritual beings can get access to the natural is through permission of people, permission of individuals that are free moral agents. Joseph, that is so good. It's, it's the way it is. Right, and we recognize this, and I, you know, Rick, I've learned so much from you. I want to say to your audience, just a huge thank you, to your partners, thank you, because you have been just such a, a voice in my life, and many well, Just like speak me. to them, because they're the ones. I want to say to you, uh, partners of this ministry, I want to thank you for, for being a part of this, because it's because of you that Rick's able to do what he does, and I am fruit of that. 
Many people like me are fruit of that. My ministry exists in part because of Rick Renner. And so thank you, partners, for doing that. But we're free moral agents. And free moral agents are those that begin to bring permission. They allow supernatural events to happen or not happen. And this is something that's so vital right now. We got to recognize this, and that's where good and healthy teaching needs to come into place. Teaching you can trust. Teaching you can trust. That's what we need. I know it. It's powerful. But we're gatekeepers to the supernatural. Here's how it works. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 46. It says, the spirit is not first, but the natural. Then comes the Spirit. Now, we know in context that's talking about Jesus and Adam and all that that took place between them. We understand that. But there's a principle here that operates through faith and what takes place in the realm of the Spirit. Faith is actions we take in the natural to induce a supernatural reaction or just receive what's already done in the Spirit. And when you see this happen, this is what takes place in the angelic as well. We've got to speak the Word of God, we've got to stand on the Word of God, and you'll begin to induce a supernatural response. I call it a supernatural reaction, like you go past the veil, you go into the realm of the Spirit by faith. But that is by simple actions in the natural. And I think where people get off is they begin to hear stories like this, they hear things that happen, and although they're real and true and wonderful, they begin to venture into things they have not seen. They begin to let their imagination grow. Some people are mentally unstable, and they're not putting all of their foundation on the written Word of God. That's correct. And then they step into these arenas. If, if people are seeing anything that is not confirmed by the Word of God, it's not right. It's not right. And you need to know about the ministry of angels, what they do and what they don't do. Yes. Because there's some things angels do not do. That's right. And if people say that they're seeing angels do those things, they're not seeing angels. That's true. That's why you need to get this book called Servants of Fowl. You'll learn what they do and you'll learn what they don't do. It's true. Angels are here to serve. They're here to fulfill the covenant. They will never violate the Word of God. They cannot. And angels don't teach. And they don't teach. Never teach. They never teach. Anytime you hear about an angel teaching, it usually gives birth to a cult or yes. to false doctrine. Wow. Well, that's, that's true. The angels come and do that because, well, we're going to talk about that. We're going to get into angels of light. That's going to be powerful. That's no, going to be, we'll keep going. Okay. We recognize this so that the Spirit of God is calling people to rise up. Angels are a weaponized force for your good, for our help. To, to continue the, the work of God and bring great opportunity and great victory, great defense, and just begin to make a way where there's been no way. Mm. They protect, they provide, they bring things, but all under the auspices of the Word of God. And that is where people miss it sometimes. And yet, if they miss it, the counterfeit comes before the real. If they're missing it, that means there's also a legitimate. If we speak the Word of God, if we release the Word of God, there is potent force available for us to produce miracles, to produce divine protection, and even alter impossible scenarios. Peter in jail, for example. That's a great example. Right. He's in jail. Now, what happened? Well, it was the gang back at the house with Rhoda. They're praying. They're interceding for Peter. And what took place? The earth was shaken. The jail cells popped open. All these things happened. I even like the part where the angel struck Peter on the side and said, hey, get up. And actually, the Greek says, he said and said and said and said, get up. I told you to get up. <laughs> Peter didn't realize it was really happening. <laughs> and I do think sometimes people have experiences and they don't really realize what's going on. Good. But that angel kept saying, I said, get up, get up. I mean, he literally was like, come on, get up. And it took a while for Peter to come to himself. Yes. And realize, hey, this is really happening. Well, then in Psalm 91, it says they will take you in their hands. I believe the angel hit him with his hand. I think Psalm 91 says they'll take you up in their hands. They'll bear you up. I think the angel shook the ground with his hands. They break out. Peter ends up at the house and Rhoda comes to the door and gasps because they're all praying for Peter. And what happened? They said, oh, no, no, don't worry about it. This is a fascinating statement they make. That's a very weird statement. It's weird. They say it is his angel. His angel. They said it's his angel. And I believe it's because when you pray, you're in the Word of God, you can have a lot of encounters. You just got to keep it in the Bible. Well, and Jesus clearly said that there are guardian angels. There are. And there really are guardian angels. There really are. Probably two for every person, maybe more. Some people need many more. Well, it's fascinating too, Rick, that sometimes for them to even think it's his angel, you know, it's a, it's a fascinating They thing. believed in the activity of angels. I know they did. And yet they thought he might have looked like Peter, which is interesting. 
The other thing about it that's interesting is this, and this is so common among people who pray sometimes. They're praying and interceding for Peter to be released, to have victory. They're praying for Peter. Suddenly, the miracle happened, the angels were activated, they're praying the Word of God, and the miracle took place, and they doubted it instantly. Right. <laughs> if we really activate angels the way we're supposed to, I believe we would see profound miracles that would actually make us almost stagger back. You know, Hebrews chapter 12 says there are innumerable companies of angels. That's right. Well, innumerable means innumerable. Innumerable. There's one Psalm says there's 20,000 angelic chariots. My goodness. Innumerable. The Greek formula that is used there describes thousands upon thousands and ten thousands upon ten thousands of angels. There are more angels than there are human beings. It's amazing. And so why would we be surprised if one appears or helps us once in a while? And one thing I love about the book of Acts is from the beginning to the end, you see angelic ministry. That's right. Ministering to those that are inheritors of salvation. Well, something I learned from you, and I actually put it in this book quoting you, but it's the topic of when Jesus called for 12 legions of angels. Well, he didn't, but he could have. He could have. Excuse me. He could have. <laughs> when, he, when he began to say, don't you know I could call on 12 legions of angels, Peter? I could do this. When you break down all the math of that, that would It's astounding. He would have wiped out the earth twice. Well, a legion, 12 legions would be 144,000. Mm -hmm. And we have one example in the Old Testament where one angel alone, do you remember how many people it killed? 180. 185. Okay. And so if one angel could do that, then what could 12 legions do? Astronomical. It's astronomical. It's astronomical. That's what's available. And yet, like you said, there's innumerable angels out of Hebrews, innumerable company of angels, and this is just the ones Jesus was referencing. And I just think that's profound, Rick. Mm. I want to thank you for that. You've, you know, I've learned so much through Sparkling Gems. I've learned so much, so much through all of your teaching. And I know everybody who watches you is so profoundly impacted by this ministry. And I'm just grateful to be with you today to talk about these things. Well, Joseph, thank you. I just love the Bible, and I'm learning too. Yeah, I'm learning amen. all the time. Amen. But so how does our audience really access all this help? The simple way is through speaking out the Word, that's doing the natural. That's doing the natural. And prayer and intercession. And by prayer and intercession, I just mean, and this might sound interesting to some people, but copious amounts of speaking in tongues. You know, you said in this book, it's really a prayer journal. It is. That you wrote this book to help people pray. That's correct. Why? What does this have to do with prayer? Well, because you, at the end of the book, really, I get into it, but I give scriptures so people can pray the Word of God and activate angels in a biblical way. There's a lot of interesting things I've seen out there. I never wanted to write a book on angels, but I've seen a lot of interesting things also coming from a prophetic type of uh, influence where people will say, oh, you can just, you know, stand on one leg, spin around, and I'm being facetious, and see an angel. Well, honestly, there's a lot of nutty stuff. There's it. really terrible stuff. Nutty, nutty stuff. It's nutty, nutty stuff. Be careful all the nutty stuff. That's why when you find something that's good, you need to grab hold of it. That's why you need to get this book called Servants of Fire. This is a book that will help you. Yeah, I, I believe that, Rick, and thank you. It's, I believe very clearly if we will pray the Word of God and go into intercession, as it says in 1 Corinthians 13, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. Spirit language. Spirit language. We begin to pray in the Spirit. We speak in new tongues. I believe angels are activated that way. I believe they're activated when we quote the Scripture, any promise of God that is yes and amen, we quote it. Angels are activated. They go after it. And any time we do the will of God, we're obedient. If God tells you to do something, you do it. You just do it. And angels will back you up because you're doing the Word of God. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. This is so good, Joseph. I'm having fun, Rick. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, I, I know that if Denise and I didn't have the activity of angels in our life, we would have been gone a long time ago <laughs> because yeah. we have traveled on rickety old planes. The things we have done to get where God has called us to do go, but we always call on the activity of angels. And really, I bank on the 91st Psalm. Amen. I, I, I bet I've quoted the 91st Psalm 10,000 times. Amazing. He shall give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. They shall bear me up in their hands lest I dash my foot against a stone. And not only have I prayed it over me, Denise and I have quoted that over our kids 
In fact, our sons, who are now adults, they can quote the whole book of the, 91st, the 91st chapter of Psalms. That's remarkable. Because we got it so in us just by quoting it, it just activates divine health. Well, your health. whole family is, is amazing, spirit-led, following God. I love your family. Thank you, Justin. We just love it. What you've done here is tremendous. I just well, honor you. Well, thank you. Well, what are we going to talk about tomorrow? Man, we are going to get into more on angels, and maybe we'll get into angels of light. Messengers Wonderful. of deception. One thing you did in this book that I loved was your description about the mutinous angels. Yes. And where they are now. Oh, yeah. Some of them are incarcerated. Yeah. And your description in this book is amazing. Well, we ask the question, can they still rebel today? And I think the answer is fascinating. It is. Friends, you need to get hold of this book. But hey, I want you to minister to our audience. Love to. Before we go to the break. Well, Father, I just begin to speak life over every person watching this right now. Every area of limitation, every area where you've been hindered. You know, it's interesting. As I'm sitting here looking at you right now, I sense somebody has been having a reoccurring sin problem in a specific area. And you've been under self-condemnation. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, He is not condemning you. He is drawing you to Him right now. And I release supernatural favor to break out from that. Repent. Quit it. Get over it. And release this angelic force by being obedient to the voice of God. I bless you in Jesus' name. I see many people that are walking on a journey. Somebody is walking. You came back from a walk or you were walking. I'm watching these footsteps. I'm watching you walk. And the Lord says, on your hikes is where I speak to you. On your hikes, I meet you. And I will continue to meet you. And I will continue to bring great liberty and freedom. And not many days from now, there's going to be an understanding of revelation that comes to you to know what to do in a business arrangement. And God will make favor for you. And you're going to break out in that setting. I activate angels over your life according to Psalm 9. Psalm 103, Psalm 29, Hebrews chapter 1, in Jesus' mighty name. I bless you today. Amen. Now, did you hear how he's quoting the scripture? This is the way you activate angels. You quote the word of God. They give heed to the word of God. They really do. And when you begin to speak the word of God and you do something by faith, it guarantees divine activity. You've got to do the natural and the result will be the supernatural. We'll be back in just a moment, and Joseph and I are going to pray for you. God has dispatched angels, servants of fire, to assist and help believers. Joseph Z. and Rick Renner sat down to delve into the subject of angelic ministry that is available to the church and you, and how to activate their service in the life of every believer. This powerful five-part series with Joseph Z. and Rick Renner covers topics like exactly who and what are angels, exactly who and what are fallen angels, the hierarchy of angels, what angels do and what they do not do. This incredible series is available in digital and physical format starting at just $10. We're also offering you Joseph Z's book, Servants of Fire, Secrets of the Unseen War and Angels Fighting for You. Servants of Fire delivers sound biblical instruction to unveil the realm of the spirit and bring to pass the will, plans and purposes of God on the earth. It dives deep into the subject of angels and makes it all understandable to those who have hungry hearts and want to experience angelic ministry. Rick Renner says, I've read a lot of books about angels over the years, but this is the best, most comprehensive and helpful book I've ever read on this subject. It was so captivating that I read it from cover to cover in a single setting. Anyone who wants to understand the realm of angels and their ministry to us needs to read this book. Order Servants of Fire today for $22. Don't miss this special offer, the five-part series, Servants of Fire, and the book, Servants of Fire by Joseph Z. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. This is Rick Renner and my friend, I'm coming to you from what's going to be the new studio in our building in Moscow. And just recently, our team moved into this building. They wandered through the hallways in amazement at what God has provided. And I wanna say thank you to you because God used you to make this dream come to pass. And I also want to say thank you for the way that you're helping us to retire the debt on the Tulsa building. I know people don't get excited about retiring debt, but I do 
because once that debt is taken care of on the Tulsa building, suddenly all of those finances are going to be released and to enable us to take the teaching of the Bible further to the ends of the earth. And just like we're now occupying this building, praise God, we're occupying the Tulsa building. There are people everywhere, employees that are taking calls, answering letters, responding to emails. That office is about ministering to people and ministering to our partners. We are a ministry that is extremely serious about taking care of people. If you've ever reached out to us, you know that when you call us, you really get prayed for. That's a very serious part of our ministry. And when we retire the debt on that wonderful Tulsa building, suddenly money will be released so we can take the teaching of the Bible through all kinds of media to the very ends of the earth. And between this office here and the office in Tulsa and our team around the world, my friends, God's grace is enabling us to do more than we would have ever thought or imagined possible. But that's what the grace of God does. It empowers us to do what we could never do by ourselves. And I wanna say thank you to you again for your part. And if you're not already a part of the giving team to help us retire that debt, would you please pray about becoming part of the giving team and together we can retire that debt and move on so that then we can take the teaching of the Bible even further to the very ends of the earth. That's our call. Proverbs 10, 21 says, the lips of the righteous feed many, and together with your help, we're feeding many people all over the world the wonderful Word of God. And I wanna say thank you in advance for being a part of our giving team. Today we've been covering the subject of angelic assistance. Angels really are sent forth to minister to those who are the heirs of salvation, and that includes you. And I want you to order the whole series on this subject, which is called Servants of Fire. Angels are servants of fire, and they've been sent by the Lord to assist you. And this series comes with a great study guide so you can read everything you're seeing or hearing and really get the teaching down deep inside you. And my friends, we need to open our hearts and our minds to the ministry of angels. Say amen. I also want you to order Joseph's book, which is called Servants of Fire. I believe it is the best book I have ever read on the subject of angelic ministry. I read it from cover to cover in one setting. That is how good it is. But hey, let us know how to pray for you. But reach out to us to order all of these things or to let us know how to pray. But Joseph and I are going to pray for you now. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. And I pray specifically for the word of God to be so strong in the life of my friend that by speaking the word, they will activate angelic yes, ministry to them and to their family yes. in Jesus name. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll see you tomorrow. But remember Ecclesiastes 8.4. Where the word of a king is, there's power. Amen. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.